Hi, my name is Michael Hutner, and today I will be reading you an essay that I wrote about why evidence is really a certain type of experience, and evidence cannot possibly be objective. Evidence equals experience. Evidence is not objective. A lot of conversations about God start out with a theist asking, do you have any evidence that God doesn't exist? And usually an atheist or agnostic will reply, the onus is on you to provide evidence. The Christian or theist then attempts to provide evidence, citing the quote perfect location of Earth within the Goldilocks zone of the solar system, or the quote existence of good and evil, or if they are like William Lane Craig, they will argue that existence itself means that there must have been a God to create it all. Premise one, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Things don't come into being from nothing. Two, the universe began to exist. There's good philosophical and scientific evidence that the universe is not eternal in the past, but had a beginning. And from that it follows three, therefore a cause of the universe exists. When I do nothing, nothing happens. In fact, I shouldn't even bring up my own experience of it because this is really a conceptual issue. How could nothing at all possibly perform an action or have an action performed upon it? How can nothing morph or change when it's nothing? Nothing changed? Nothing morphed? Sounds like nothing happened to me. But getting back to evidence. Evidence is defined by Google as, quote, the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. Available, in this case, means that a human needs to access it and evaluate it. Since propositions and beliefs are claims that are that particular events have actually occurred or will occur, they can only be evaluated by actually observing reality. Unlike scientific theories, which are evaluated analytically, whether or not the proposition is true depends upon verifying the claim with your sensory system. You see the paw prints of Bigfoot. I see a prank. We both evaluated the evidence differently. It should be clear now that evidence is simply a type of persuasive experience. The real question in the case of the paw prints is whether or not you can tell me how Bigfoot is a rational explanation for the prints. All of our conclusions about what's possible and not possible about reality are only conceived cognitively, using our brains only separate from the auxiliary sensory system. This means that the evidence, or what you experience, will depend upon what conclusions you have arrived at in your mind. If those conclusions are irrational, then your evidence, or experiences, will suggest some irrational shit. This is why people get convinced that they've seen ghosts, felt God, got abducted by aliens, etc. Whether or not these controversial entities could possibly exist can be settled using critical thinking alone. Evidence has no place in scientific discussions, since science is only about explaining phenomena or determining the possibilities of reality. Science does not prove what happened or what will happen. It makes assumptions in order to explain phenomena, theoretically. Fossils, for instance, are not evidence, they are assumed to exist in order to rationally use our critical thinking skills only to explain why they were located deep underground, how they fit together to form skeletons of animals, why they look so old, etc. But for those explanations to mean anything, we must first assume that fossils exist. 
evidence has nothing to do with science at all, since science is objective, and evidence is subjective. But what do I mean when I use this crucial term, objective? Well, just to quickly justify the importance of strict definitions, I should quickly explain why all concepts are defined. All concepts are defined if they are to convey any meaning whatsoever. It is impossible for a term to both have meaning and be left undefined, since definitions limit the extent of the word's usage to a single unambiguous meaning. Without definition, the intended meaning of the word is unclear and it becomes impossible to understand how the term is being used. It is quite common for the term objective to be used as a qualifier for the popular and largely misconceived notions of truth, evidence, morality, etc. The implied meaning of this qualifier is that these concepts have the potential to be independent of observation. This is the result of modern philosophers and scientists not defining their key terms, since if they had, it would be clear to them that truth, evidence, and morality are fundamentally relations dependent upon an observer. In other words, they are subjective concepts. These concepts directly contradict objectivity. So it's no wonder how difficult it is to find two philosophers who can agree on a single objective truth or moral rule. We can now define objectivity as that which is independent of observation. Objectivity is applied in science in order to conclude whether or not explanations for events in reality are possible. Only possibilities can be determined objectively because explanations are evaluated using cognition only. We think critically and analyze explanations. Such conclusions can be considered objective since they require no observation. Truth, evidence, proof, etc. are all verified by the sensory system and so is dependent upon observation. In other words, they are subjective. So, the next time somebody attempts to convince you that their truths or moral opinions or evidence or whatever is objective, provide them with a, a simple explanation that subjective concepts cannot, by definition, be objective, and then enjoy their reaction.